Welcome back to the third week of the Press Box Preps Edition. I'm Daily Chronicle Sports Editor John Stife. I'm here with sports reporter John Sally and sports reporter Nick Gertz. Uh, we'll start out with Genoa Kingston. Uh, they're 2-0 and coming into this week's game against Harvard. Talk a little bit about what they've done so far. Well, last week they went out to West Chicago High School and beat Wheaton Academy, a second-year football program. They beat them pretty good. Uh, it was a closer score than most people expected, but mostly because Wheaton Academy came across and scored two touchdowns late against the second team of, uh, of Genoa Kingston. But they, they had a great game, the Cogs did. They ran the ball, they passed the ball, they basically did what they wanted for the first three quarters. Chris Wilkins, the quarterback, another game over 100 yards, another game with you know a couple touchdowns. Threw one through the air, had over 100 yards passing, and defensive back Nick Lopez had a big night with two interceptions. He also caught a ball for a touchdown. All right, and Chris Wilkins is obviously a kid that uh, we like because he watches the press box every week. Yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> thanks for watching that, and thank you for the, su the suggestion on the new name of the show, Three Dudes Talking. Uh, so thank you. We do appreciate that. And back to the talking. Uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about Chris this year. He's uh, been able to run all over everybody in the first two weeks. He seems to have... A, bigger role this year. Yeah, they really are depending on Chris Wilkins a lot this year. He's been a threat for them. He's been running for over 100 yards a game. He's been doing basically what he wants when he has the ball in his hands. And the other the other week, when Wheaton Academy tried to shut down T.C. Holterhouse, their star running back, Wilkins did what he wanted on the ground. He ran for 62 yards and a touchdown on a design sneak. So he's basically a great running back for them in a quarterback's body. All right, and they've had a couple lopsided wins so far, but this week it's not going to be like that. They're playing a Harvard team that they've had trouble with. Uh, talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, I had the chance to listen to Coach Bill McCarty's post-game speech on Friday, and his message, message to his team was basically, look, they played us the first couple years I was here, and they beat us pretty good. So you've got to get ready for this game. It's not going to be like the first two. All right, and on to DeKalb. They uh, come into the, this week's game against Sycamore 0-2. Talk a little bit about what happened to them Friday. It's another disappointing game for uh, for DeKalb. I mean, Mark Karch, uh, Kachmer actually uh, ran for 412 yards, six touchdowns, and 17 carries. That's a half a year right there, and he, what he did in the first half is pretty much a game right there, 280 yards, and it's 12 carries and five touchdowns. So, I mean, it was pretty much St. Francis running at will. So it's got to be a little disappointing for DeKalb, and right now they're also searching for whatever they can do on offense, too. I mean, things are disappointing. They ditched the spread offense in the second half, so right now they're just trying to search for answers. And Sycamore coming into that game on a little different note. They're 2-0 and right now. They ended up beating Burlington Central on Friday. They had another impressive game from senior Tom Hensley. Caught a couple touchdown passes from Michael Buckner. They seem to be in the right place right now, as opposed to DeKalb, who is, I guess, searching for answers. They did get a positive with Mandel Williams returning, but how can they, I guess, use that for this week? Well, right now, if you saw what they saw in the second half, I mean, Mandel Williams gives them that explosiveness, that power running back that they needed that was gone from the first week. So maybe that was a positive that came out of ditching the spread offense in the second half. It's the fact they replaced Mandel Williams in, the, in their normal st style offense from what they had last year, and he got 100 yards. So hopefully that they're looking for that to continue against Sycamore. All right, and Sycamore is a team that's been pretty much a juggernaut offensively so far this pretty year. Much, they've, yeah. they've scored at will, and they're going to look to do the same thing against DeKalb. I'm sure if they're winning the coin toss, they're looking to get the ball right away and just take it to them. Michael Buckner's been good in the beginning of games. I guess he threw an interception this last week, but he recovered well. And they've uh, just been deep offensively. They've had five running backs over 50 yards apiece the first two weeks, which is, I guess, numbers that you, you can't really – tell what guy you want to stop at that point. It's like there's a lot of options. I'm sure Sycamore's got to be looking their chops. I mean, if they're looking at the stats from the last couple of games, what DeKalb's been giving up, they got to be looking at this like, what, what can we do against this defense? So Yeah, and Sycamore's a team that's going to run the ball as much as they can, and then they'll throw when they have to. So, you know, Coach Joe Ryan likes to say that I'm going to take whatever the defense is going to allow us to do, and if that's a running game, they're going to just run it all over the barbs. What do they have to do to stop that type of offense? Well, so far it hasn't worked for DeKalb, so it's going to be quite interesting because, not, I mean, like you said, they could all, they could run the ball and they could pass the ball. And, I mean, if, you know, if St. Francis could run over, you know, DeKalb's defense like they did, I mean, from what James Noakes was telling me, I mean, he was watching the game too. He's like, not only was the first string, but the second string and the third string and the fourth string was going crazy on this team. So, I mean, if they want to run the ball, they could just run the ball. If they want to pass the ball, they could do the same too. At this point, it doesn't look like it's going to be a very close game. I mean, Sycamore's probably going to go out there and win real big. Do you see any other possibility this week? 
I don't know. I mean, if, whenever they, whenever DeKalb and Sycamore meet up, no matter how bad the year has been for DeKalb, they always find a way to get ready for this game. It's, like, it's sort of like what, what teams say, this is their Super Bowl. I mean, if they go 1-8 one, one and eight the rest of the year, as long as that one win is against Sycamore, their season's made. I mean, from going from the start of the year, you know, hoping for a playoff spot to being 1-8 and eight possibly this year, and they're, I mean, if that's what could salvage a year and a win against Sycamore, that I, I think, you know, some people might be happy, but I know a lot of people might not be happy on top of that as well. All right, but we're talking about a team that ditched its offense this last week and goes with something else. Do you... Do you think that's, I mean, that's got to be a bad sign. Do you think there's any possibility for DeKalb this week? You know, it depends on which team shows up, I guess. They've been okay in the first game, and then in that last game, it just was not there. And so it, it depends on which DeKalb team shows up and whether or not this could be a close game, I think. All right, any prediction? Uh, all right, Sycamore, 38, DeKalb, 17. All right, John? I'm going with Sycamore by two touchdowns. And I'll take Sycamore by three touchdowns, at least. So. I was the only one who actually had a score. You guys are going to score? <laughs> score it up. We <laughs> score this week. 35-14. <laughs> right. right. and, and that's being generous to the Cowboys, I think, so. Thank <laughs> With you. the way their offense has been. But we'll see what happens this Friday, and then we'll be back next week to uh, give you our take on what happened in the big game and uh, with Genoa Kingston taking out Harvard. So. This has been the third episode of the Press Box. Thanks a lot for coming back. Uh, as always, send us your comments or suggestions to sports at daily-chronicle.com, and we'll see you next week.